Good evening there, friends. Hope you've had a wonderful day today. Here we are again for our psalm reading tonight. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome. We've been doing this nightly for a while now. And as always, it's just a hope and prayer that it blesses and encourages you as you listen to it. And if it does, then I just always ask that you share it with someone else. Uh, bless and encourage them as well. Uh, tonight's psalm comes to us from Psalm 41. Uh, my name is Gerald. I'm here at the Innovate Church here in Kannapolis. And again, welcome to you. I hope you've had a great day today. Tonight's psalm is called, O Lord, Be Gracious to Me. So, Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on a sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words. While his heart gathers iniquity, when he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst of me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me, and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout and triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. So one of the first things I wanted to mention about this, the psalm, I don't know if you caught it, but in the story of Jesus in the Last Supper, where he gets up and he cleans the, the feet of all his disciples there, including Judas, who ends up betraying him, he actually tells, in the Gospel of John, he tells that this was to fulfill the word here in this psalm that says, Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Because he was telling his disciples that Judas had left. Judas was going to betray him. And he says it is to fulfill this word from David thousands of years before he had come on, the, before Jesus had come here on the earth. So how awesome is that? I always love to find those little nuggets here in the, the scriptures and see those prophecies and how they have become fulfilled. And then here in the psalm, it, it seems as though David is mired in some kind of sickness or not feeling so well, and he's you know, laying in his sick bed, and he's got people coming to him and offering you know the empty platitudes that so many of us do at times whenever one of our friends is, is sick or you know, going through something, sometimes we, you know, just try to encourage them with the, oh, that's all right, you know, things are going to get better for you. And we just leave it at that or, you know, don't really have empathy for the person. I think David was kind of going through that here. But the biggest thing for me here is, you know, this first, very first line of this says, blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. Because so often we overlook the poor or we blame them for the situation that they're in. You know, well, if they worked harder, they would have more. If they did this, they would be better off. You know, all these different things that we give them our wisdom about. And I know that, you know, especially here in our country, there's so much more to someone being in a poor condition. You're less fortunate, as many of us would call them. You know, we look at them as being a project to fix, you know, or just a blight on society. And if you think about Jesus and the life that he spent here on the earth, it was the poor and the outcasts that he came to. And you don't see him, you know, putting them down because of their situation. Instead, you see him going and healing and and taking care of them and showing love to them and acceptance. 
And that's what we should do as Christians as well. Instead of looking at someone and they're, you know, and saying they're they're just simply less fortunate or they're they're cursed or they're lazy, you know, all these different things that we say about someone that we see that's poor. We should love. We should do good for. And as it says here, we should consider them. And that means, you know, consider what can we do? How can we help? And that's one of my heart, or part of my heart with this church, is to be active in serving, not just to serve to do good for, but to help lift up, to walk beside of. That's what Jesus would do. That's what he did. He didn't just throw money at them and say, you know, I hope this helps you out. No, he walked beside of, just like you and I, he walks beside of us today, helping us in our own situation. And if we're well off, then thanks be to God that we are. But that's when we should even be more willing to, as it says, consider the poor. How can we help? How can we stand beside of? How can we show love to instead of judgment? It's so easy to look at the outward appearance and see and, and point out things that are wrong or what we think they should do or what we think the situation is. But Jesus calls us to love, to care for, to be humble, and to walk beside of. And so that's my heart tonight with this, is to definitely make sure we are doing what we can to love everyone in whatever situation but also to encourage because it says you know jesus says later on that blessed are the poor blessed are the needy you know i don't know if you've run across you know someone before that's in that kind of situation and man their faith usually just amazes me to see them you know doing without things that i find that bring me happiness or comfort and yet they, without those things, still praise and worship God. That's faith. You know, it's, easy to, it's easy to worship Him and praise Him for the many blessings we have around us. But what about whenever we don't have these things? You know, what if we didn't have our home or our job or a car that runs? Would we still praise and bless Him? Would we still worship Him? And that's a, that's a deep question for us. But again, I just pray that we see the poor around us and we don't judge, but instead we love and we seek to walk beside of and to share Christ's love with them too. Friends, I pray that this has been a, a word of encouragement or blessing to you. And like I said earlier, if it is, I just pray you send it on to someone else. Share it with them so that they can be blessed and encouraged as well. Until we come back together again tomorrow evening, I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you.